When it comes to licensed games based on a certain aspect of culture, it's pretty hit or miss. Take for example DC and Marvel. They've had their fair share of good and, well, just awful video games. We see a shining example of what can be accomplished with things like DC's Arkham franchise. At least, the first two. You see, I totally enjoyed the first two games. I was immersed and, you know, honestly, I had a damn good time. It lifted the bar high when it came to that sort of gameplay. Arkham Origins, on the other hand, while enjoyable, certainly had its issues. It didn't feel as polished as the first two, and honestly, I felt like it was more of a rush job than anything else. The gameplay was still there, but unfortunately, frame rate was somewhat of an issue, and where the first game had the seamless fluidness from different map points, the third had longer load times and it seemed a little tired to me. I still enjoyed the game, but with those issues, the immersion was broken. But that sort of thing I can put past me, since, you know, I enjoyed the first two so well. Right now, I'm going to look into the DC Marvel game franchise and discuss what made them great and what just had me wanting to beat the game with a hammer. Let the top five begin. There are just a lot of bad games out there. And at number five, Aquaman Battle for Atlantis wins the spot. This DC game came to Nintendo GameCube and Xbox in 2003 with less than stellar reception. It was even panned as one of the worst video games of all time. But, let's point out its failures, shall we? Since that's why I'm here. The controls? Well, you had numerous attacks that you could use to defeat your opponents, but all you really needed was to mash one single button. Graphics? It's 2003. We made great strides by then, but Aquaman looks like he's having a frickin' seizure every time he attacks someone. The world is large, it would seem, but it's void of life. There's no ground objects to be seen, and no animated backgrounds, and... Where are the other Atlanteans? In other words, Aquaman's fray into the gaming world sunk before it left Dry Dock. Re-released on multiple platforms, including PlayStation and Xbox Live, X-Men Arcade found its stride again. Originally an arcade classic and one of the best Marvel beat-em-ups they had to offer. Not only did it have that wonderful co-op gameplay that we all love, you had multiple characters to choose from, such as Cyclops, Storm, Nightcrawler, Colossus, Dazzler, and of course, Wolverine. The game may be a little repetitive, but it's certainly a blast to play, and a true classic to X-Men's heyday. A gem to be sure. It lands at one of the best at number four. This game was just awful. And it lands at one of the worst at number three. We have X-Men Destiny. You would think that having the capability of creating your own mutant would be pretty cool, right? Well, create is a rather loose term as you're only given three characters to choose from. And they're a pretty dull group, let me tell ya. And there's no chance of playing as one of your favorite X-Men either. 
So, you know, sorry about that. Sure, you get to fight alongside, you know, your favorites. Even decide if you'd rather join the X-Men or team up with the Brotherhood of Mutants. Even in doing that, the storyline is pretty much the same, no matter who you choose. And the controls, while okay, seemed rather dull and repetitive. Sure, plenty of button mashing, but when you can use the same button over and over and over again, that tends to get pretty tedious. I found this in a bargain bin, and it sounded pretty cool at the time, and at five bucks, I thought, what the hell, right? I think in hindsight, I should have held on to my money and made a run to the taco shack. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna gush just a little bit here. At number two, one of the best Batman games ever. And it's not what you're thinking. Way, way before the Arkham series is Batman Returns. It was released in 1993 by Konami. They had a long line of hits on their resume. Everyone knows about my obsession with the Dark Knight. That's no secret. In either case, the game was a lot of fun to play. It was a great side-scrolling beat-em-up, and it kept with the feel of its source content. Add the music and the great backdrop, it made for an awesome time. And no worries, there are no bat nipples in this game. And where Aquaman may have been one of the worst games ever, this one is the worst game ever ever. And if you don't believe me, look it up. Superman 64. Where do I begin here? Okay, well, the controls were broken. I think perhaps beyond broken, if that's even a thing. Collision detection is seriously suspect. Many times you would just fly next to something and not even touch it, and you fall. I did that numerous times, even though, you know, my eyes said otherwise. As far as dialogue, well, I think they took bad acting lessons from the Resident Evil cast. The main difference is, the original Resident Evil had so much going for it, and it was just a great game. Let's not even get started with the map. You're supposed to be in Teeming Metropolis. To me, this looks like someone just threw a couple of blocks on the table along with random toy cars and called it done. And no civilians running around either. Was this a thing? Seriously, both Superman 64 and the Aqua Ga Aquaman game I mentioned before had no people other than the random villain. Just avoid it. Avoid it like soups avoids green kryptonite. Okay, guys, that's it. Like I said before, there are a ton of great games and equally bad games out there, and this was just my own personal opinion on the matter. Any, you know, that I may have missed? There's got to be a few that you all can think of. So, be sure to check out my links below, and it shows you all my social media sites. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and click the thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode. Till next time, I'll be seeing ya. Superman, the video game.